I'm very much looking forward to this. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to be testing out the recently released Drake Cutter Starter Ship. We'll be comparing our test data against other ships that also come in starter packages. Cool. This will give us an idea of how effective each ship is at specific roles in the current game environment. And if you stick around, we'll let you know how you can take home a brand new Drake Cutter as part of a package including the game download, absolutely free. Everybody, know Dra everybody knows Drake's the best manufacturer. As the Drake everybody. Cutter is marketed towards new citizens, we enlisted the help of Cadet Kevin for some of today's testing. I'm sure Drake's gonna win. <laughs> if you're interested in winning the ship, rest assured knowing we'll patch it up like new before giving it away. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. That's... It would appear that our first test today is the upside down test. Does it take off upside down in standard gravity? Oh, look at no this. No problem. I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there. At a glance, the cutter looks about as aerodynamic as a flying Winnebago from there 1987. There it is. There it is. Beef knows. Beef knows what's up. Beef knows what's up. It's Eagle Five. It's Eagle Five from Spaceballs. Hey, you know, Tina disagrees with me. Like, I've got to have a talk with Tina. We're going to probably have a podcast. I'm going to bring Beef on, and we're going to talk about the cutter and how it is modeled from the Eagle Five. Thank you. Thank you, Mostly Beef. Let's see how it compares to other starter ships in our Microtech cruising speed test. Each ship was flown at a height of as close to 2,000 meters as possible without using any boost. At an average speed of 174, Drake manages to take the title from RSI for having the ship with the highest possible wind resistance. If you're in Did we even have a doubt? Did we even have a doubt? <laughs> to racing or trying to fly like Tirada through the canyons on Daymar, this probably isn't the ship for the job. Given how slow it is, we thought maybe it was being weighed down by extra thick armor. To test this theory, we're going to see if it can withstand being shot by one of these. <laughs> Distinguished for its service in the Second Tivaran War, the Tumbrel Nova battle tank is known for packing quite a punch. It does awesome, this with dude. the appropriately named Slayer Cannon, developed by Hurston Dynamics. Oh, if Drake it. are hiding any it, armor dude. plating in the walls work. of that ship, we're about to find out. Already in. Hooked, dude. <laughs> 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 <Yassi! laughs> That's awesome. Well, I guess there wasn't any hidden armor. <laughs> Next up, we have our PFAF assessment, which is a combination of three separate tests. The first of which being the time it takes to get from the ground on Microtech up to quantum drive altitude at oh. 11,000 meters using the full capacitor for boost just once. Listen, Red Bear and I talk about this all the time. All the time. We talk about this. Red Bear, tell them what we tell them. <laughs> the Drake Cutter unsurprisingly sits at the bottom of this list with a very laid back time of 58.6 seconds. That's around twice as long as the Anvil Arrow and Hornet this F7C. This is so cool, man. Great testing, dude. That's so cool. The second stat we'll be using is the average time it takes to quantum travel from a set location near Port Tresla to a set landing spot at a mining facility on right. Microtech's surface, All right. then disembark and open a door on a chosen building. All right. <laughs> this test covers factors that have an impact on disembarking, such as doors, ramps, seats, and elevator animations. Dude, this the man's doing the work that matters. This man's doing God's work. <laughs> this is such a great idea for a video, dude. This is such a great idea for a video. This is the type of guy that you do not see. Can I?
First off, I'm going to give you a whole one or two subscribers from this right now. <laughs> it's going to go over in droves of one or two. Listen, I'm putting this, this link in there. If you're watching live, please right now go over there. Go do everything that you need to do. Click all the buttons. Go over there. Help them out. I'm sure I'll get a whole one or two subscribers from this. Uh, but I'm hoping we have more of an impact when it pushes us on YouTube. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, go to the description and go down and click that link as well and help them out. This is actually a, a wonderful beginner's guide, man, and done su in such a different way that, man, I again, I'm going to break my applause button. This is awesome. Great idea, dude. Great idea. These results start to highlight the ships that are quite inconvenient as daily drivers or shuttles. The third is our standardized box loading test, which times how long it takes to store a box on board the ship from 30 meters away. Important. Get to the pilot seat and be flight ready. Important. Wow. The Hornet F7C and Anvil Arrow have nowhere to stuff a box and are unsuitable for anyone interested in delivery missions or storing any inventory. The Mustang Alpha. <laughs> I love that the Mustang's right at the bottom where it needs to be. <laughs> Do that Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> do that Mustang. But has a poor result here due to the fact that the cargo tube has to be accessed from the rear of the ship. Uh-oh. Rear cargo tube. <laughs> now, if we add Whoa. these together, we get our PFAF, which is our piss fart around factor. <laughs> this helps us visualize how convenient or inconvenient a ship may be if chosen as a daily driver or as your only ship. Keep in mind that if you are avoiding PFA planets with atmosphere, good, the results would be different. However, that would severely limit your mission options. The Arrow and F7C are dedicated fighters and are strictly limited <laughs> to that role. Choosing one of these would limit your career opportunities to ship combat only. We'll be looking closer at combat performance a little later in the video. The Pisces C8X is the quickest ship in the list that includes an interior capable of supporting some crew members, making it a great shuttle or rescue ship if your friends need a ride. It can also make the longest planet-to-planet -planet trip in Stanton without needing to refuel. The Mustang and Arrow need to be upgraded to make that trip. The Avenger Titan and Cutlass Black are tied as the next most convenient ships that have enough space to comfortably fit a PTV ground vehicle. This is important when it comes to bunker missions that are protected by two or more anti-air turrets, where you typically need to land over 1600 cool. meters away and go in on foot. This would significantly reduce your income per hour on these missions as it's quite a long walk. And although we did see the cutter fit some ground vehicles in earlier testing, <laughs> it still struggles to get anything done in a reasonable time. And from now on, I'll be referring to it as the struggle bus. Let's simulate a delivery mission worth 10,000 AUEC bus. on Microtech using this information, which would include leaving New Babbage, Quantum traveling to an outpost to get the delivery, embarking with your box, getting back up to Quantum travel altitude, another Quantum jump to the destination and deliver the box. Here's what your income would look like if you did this for two hours. Please remember that this is just an example to compare the ships against each other and does not reflect actual in-game earnings. The Pisces is the top choice here when it comes to delivery missions. Struggle McStruggle Bus manages to place <laughs> in the top 10 here. Struggle Amazing. McStruggle Bus. For those of you that are into a bit of cargo hauling, we have you covered too. We used the same data to calculate how much total cargo could be moved between two outposts on Microtech in two hours. The Andromeda, with 96 SCU of space, can move quite a lot of tea and biscuits. That's Moving 4 so SCU cool. of cargo at the speed of an elderly wombat, <laughs> our featured new ship from Drake takes 8th place here. If you stick to trade routes that don't get atmosphere involved, the struggle bus would be roughly tied with the Pisces and Mustang Alpha if you were to equip the same quantum drive in each ship. Moving on. <laughs> Up next we have the MOB-012 test, which is one of my favorites. We've asked Cadet Kevin to land the struggle bus the right way up in this lovely open area and await further instructions. This is an MOB-012. Better. Awesome. <laughs> 
you access. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you. To known as the Colossus Bomb. You'll probably come across one or two of these if you try out the Jump Town event. <laughs> Once Cadet Kevin notices the bomb, we'll see how far he gets before it hits the ground. Nice. Good editing. Good editing. He's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I think I may be in a lot of trouble with the health and safety team. <laughs> Let's talk about maneuverability, which is probably the most important factor for ship combat in the game's current state. We tested each ship in patch 317 to get the most up-to-date data possible. All of these tests were done in space without the influence of gravity, to keep the results consistent. There's a lot of information to discuss in regard to dogfighting maneuvers and the flight model, but for now, we're going to keep it simple and general in nature. Here we've combined the acceleration values across all directions, to get an overall picture of how responsive the ship feels when accelerating or changing directions. If we get rid of forwards and backwards, this would be your jerk profile, meaning how quickly you can change directions <laughs> while facing your target, to throw off their aim. If you're someone who has fought against an anvil arrow in a dogfight, you know exactly how much of a jerk the arrow can be. <laughs> when dogfighting, you'll often get into a turn rate fight. Here we have the times it took the ships to do a full rotation in pitch yaw and roll. The Mustang Alpha managed to outperform the arrow here at half the price. The lower in this list the ship is, the more of an issue it becomes to get a shot on small fast ships. If you're going bounty hunting or answering distress calls for the first time, most of your targets will be small fast ships. Let's have a look at the weapons that are fitted to each ship by default. This is so very well done. Here's the sustained pilot weapon damage per second for each ship with default power settings. The Anvil Arrow, Cutlass Black and Avenger have some ballistic weapons equipped and will have greatly reduced damage once the ammunition runs out. The F-7C and Aurora have spare slots to fit more weapons. The storage mod on the F-7C can also be swapped for a big size 4 weapon. If your turrets are manned, your total output looks more like this. And here's the total missile payload for each ship. Missiles have had a fair share of bugs over the years, but when they're working properly, the Andromeda is a hell of a missile boat with its 52 missiles. The Cutlass Black is also fairly well armed here, coming with 8 size 3s and 8 size 2s. When it comes to shields, we only counted a single face for ships with multiple shield sections, to represent the total hit points facing a single direction. If we add on nose and body structure hit points, we get a very rough idea of the beating each ship can take. The other cool thing is he's comparing real life value as well. I think that's great. Not only is he, is he taking the ships and, and giving you the, the statistics on them in every possible form and fashion, but he's also comparing it to what you're spending in the real world. The armor system we have currently is just a placeholder for a more complex fully physicalized system, so eventually this graph will be meaningless as your survivability will be more about not being shot in a vulnerable part of your ship or having an important part of your ship blown off. In my opinion, Agility and firepower are better ways to measure survivability than durability. For the time being, and also considering the fact that Drake often have higher damage resistances on their armor, the struggle bus should be a pretty tough nut to crack. <laughs> Cadet Kevin should just about be recovered from his clone regeneration by now, <laughs> right on time to help us with our last two tests. 
Kevin's last task is to fly the ship from Port Tresla to Daymar, where we'll rendezvous at a bar for a few beers before preparing the ship to be given away. We may or may not have had Kevin's medication dosage adjusted for this first part. <laughs> The aim here is to see how difficult it is to access the ship when in roughly the same state as a typical Drake owner would be in most days of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's having some issues. And as we suspected, Cadet Kevin seems to be struggling <laughs> to find the tiny button that opens the ramp. Oh, you thought of all the tests, The tiny dude. buttons you can be forgiven in most applications, but when it comes to Drake, they should know their customer base better. And Kevin has passed out. We assisted Kevin with his med overdose by giving him some more meds and got him into the pilot seat for the final part of the test. One feature that is important to many of Stanton's pilots is a ship's ability to keep certain goods hidden from those pesky security scanners. <laughs> Unbeknown to Kevin, we've hidden a small container on board as best Kevin we can, is, is containing pepe. a harmless synthetic substance that registers on security scanners the same as an illegal drug would. If Kevin makes the full trip without being hassled by security, then maybe the struggle bus has at least one use after all. Now, we'll cut ahead to Kevin's arrival on Daymar, and let you know how his trip went. Local security forces have confirmed that the man in the medical gown had been stopped for a routine security search when the standoff began. Witnesses report that the man was arguing with the officers that were conducting the search and had managed to snatch a firearm from one of the officers and is now holding two officers as hostages. Due to unforeseen circumstances, it doesn't look like the struggle bus is going to be ready to give away. To make it up to you, we've upgraded the prize to this Pisces C8X. The Pisces C8X is the most convenient ship we tested today, and is versatile enough to get you through most types of gameplay currently available in the Stanton system. The metallic red paint and game download is also included in the prize. Anyone who is subscribed to the channel and comments on this video is entered into the competition. Wow, did the you guys hear that? The winner will be drawn at 12pm. Listen, listen, listen. UTC on the 15th of March. And then wow, guys. Okay, you want to get involved in a giveaway as well? That's another reason to go over there. I'm putting that link down again for people. You want to get in on that giveaway? Click that link. Go over there, comment, like the video, go help them out, share the video, get it out there. I think this is a wonderful way. How many views does this have right now? <clears throat> let's help our friend out mostly shenanigans also known as mostly beef who's here live with us right now he only has 34 views on this which i'm shaming the star citizen community right now <laughs> oh that's the wrong but i keep pushing salad vibes that's the wrong button you're the same color pepe can you can you switch the colors for me please thank you shaming shaming back to shaming shame Shaming the Shame. Star Citizen community for not helping Shame. out this awesome gem of a man who's making some really funny content. Only three likes. I just gave it four. I'm not going to enter. I'm not going to enter it, so I'm not going to comment, but I will like it. But if you guys want to enter the giveaway, go over there. Go down here and comment, for God's sake. Give the man a comment. Give him a subscription. I am subscribed. I love his content. He's getting, like, so much better the more that... By the way, it's getting so much better, man. Like, this is so engaging especially when it's a new player guy dude like again like you you've kind of blown my mind man you're 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 taking things that i mostly know and you're making it digestible and fun dude and that is deserving of some applause like that, and the tests are great the tests are, are, are awesome and it's got humor in it totally digging it totally digging it announced by video shortly after if you are contacted about the prize, make sure you confirm that you've won by watching the announcement video, so you can be sure it's not a scam. Now let's wrap up with a quick overview of what we've learned about these ships today. Between the You're Mustang Alpha and You're the right, Aurora, dude. the Mustang outperforms the Aurora in pretty much every aspect. We'll the Aurora refresh has it. We'll a refresh bed, and see what but happens. that won't fingers. be important until the universe gets much bigger. The 100i is a bit like an Instagram model. Looks fancy and has nicely molded plastics, but doesn't really offer anything else. 
That's because it's The origin. Avenger Titan offers more earning opportunities than the C8X due to its ability to carry a PTV, and is also a bit more capable in ship combat than the C8X or Mustang Alpha. The Cutlass Black offers great versatility like the Avenger Titan, it always has. but with a much greater cargo hauling potential and space yep. for larger yep. vehicles like yep. the Cyclone. The Nomad and Freelancer offer cargo hauling and small vehicle transport, but are quite inconvenient as we showed earlier yes, and will yes. struggle when it comes to defending against pirates. The F7C Hornet isn't worth the cost when ships like the Cutlass Black and Arrow are cheaper. This ship is better purchased in-game. The Anvil Arrow is the best dogfighter in the list, however dogfighting is all it can do, and is also better purchased in the game. The Andromeda is vulnerable if flown solo, and should mostly be flown with one or two extra people to man the turrets. For very high or extreme risk bounty hunting, the Andromeda would be the top pick. As for our feature ship, the Struggle Bus, it has no real purpose just yet. <laughs> it has a bathroom, a bed, and a lot of fuel, and that's but those enough. won't be useful until ship. the Star Citizen universe expands in size with systems like Pyro which could still be a fair while away. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you see a video linked in the top left corner, it'll mean I've created an amendment video due to significant changes in the information provided. Oh, that's great. The that's bottom great. left is reserved it. for the giveaway announcement. He's going he's gonna to update it. That's awesome. I think that's great. And you're going to continually update that. That's perfect. Wow. I'm going to give that some applause. <laughs> Let's go over there and see what effect we have as the DG360 Army while we're live here. Currently standing at 703 subscribers with four likes and 34 views. Let's refresh here and see what we did. <laughs> All Hello right. and welcome. Let's see. He is now at 713 subscribers with 18 likes and 132 views. You guys, thank you. That's super nice. That's a nice little bump. Now, keep it going. Keep it going. Again. I'm going to put this link here for everybody live. Uh, if you didn't click it, do that. That's a nice little bump for you, buddy. Sorry it's not more, but it's 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 a bit of help. And and I hope that you get much more help. And everybody that's watching this on YouTube, go down to the description. Click on our friend Mostly Shenanigans, a.k.a. Mostly Beef. Go click that description down below. Help the man out. I think that was a wonderfully edited video. I had a great time watching that. Very informative, very funny and the guy deserves at least a thousand subscribers for God's sake. Go down and let's get him to a thousand subscribers and you have a chance to win. So enter it, get in the giveaway. I'll try and get this out. Uh, actually I'll try and get this out this weekend if I can. I'm sorry if I cannot, <clears throat> but, um, to keep things relevant, Pepe, we need to get this video out as soon as we can. All right, guys, listen, let's get back to the show. Let's get back to the show.